This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii on this Martin Luther King Day. And human beings aren't the only entity that is getting liberated and rising in this world. So are so-called waste products. And do we have a recycling, reuse, make use of everything kind of story for you today, which has implications for the growth of the Hawaiian economy. And we're not talking more tourism. We're talking making better use of what we have. It gives me great pleasure to introduce George Pritchard, manager of CH4 Agriculture, and Steve Joseph, Vice President, Research, I believe, of PVT Landfill. Now, many years ago in a previous life in the energy office, <clears throat> I got put in charge of promoting recycling because that's resource efficiency, which is a component of energy efficiency. And at that time, well, you were probably still in the sandbox and you may have been in junior high. This is quite, quite a while ago. Uh, the Hawaii recycled 8% of all of its waste product, and I think that was exclusively old uh, junked cars. We started the Hawaii Recycling Association and moved up and up and up and up and up and up, and H Power got built, great recycler, and last time I looked, we were up around 78% of all the recyclables that we're getting processed. And what's our greatest uh, export? Used to be sugar, used to be pine. Now it's scrap metal because of all of our efforts. However, we did not consider that certain things were unrecyclable and just lost and forgotten. No more, thanks to Steve Joseph, PVT Landfill. Why don't you kick us off, Steve, by telling what PVT Landfill does, and then you can segue into George's. Yeah, PVT, we're the largest <clears throat> recycler on the island. We did 187,000 tons last year. And out of that, about 45,000 of that is wood. So we take all the construction demolition debris that comes in, anything that comes from construction, and we recycle it. So we go through, we redo, we crush the concrete, reuse it, pull the metal out, pull the wire out, and have a wood product that comes out that is suitable. It's, we call it a feedstock. It's suitable for use for either gasification or anaerobic digestion. There's a number of uses. So it can provide power to you know, the islands, and that's mm -hmm. that much less oil or fuel we have to buy. And, and, and that much less landfill space we're taking up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the landfill lasts a lot longer. We only mm -hmm. put things in it that really have to go in it because there's no way to recycle it. So what we're doing, though, with all the wood that's coming out, and we're part of the Hawaii Bioeconomy Trade Organization, mm -hmm which includes PAR, Grace Pacific, the mm -hmm. gas company. We're all trying to make a greener economy over here and import a lot less fuel and not import gas. So we can have the next slide. This is what happens. We run the wood down and we pick out the concrete, we pick out the wood, we pick out the metal. Now the wood, is probably about 50 or 60 percent by bulk of all the waste in a construction demolition bin. I'm glad those guys are wearing gloves. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm the next slide there. So this is the finished product that is our feedstock that goes out. Um, this is about the size of it. It's four inch minus grind. So this is suitable either for gasification or Guys like the gas company are looking at anaerobic digestion for it. Mm -hmm. 
we can have. Can you export yeah. to the gas company and can they process this too? Or? Well, they're looking at guys like George mm -hmm. that can come in with anaerobic digesters, mm -hmm. digest it, produce methane, which then they can produce and send out in the gas pipeline. Mm -hmm. So and they're, that's they're well acquainted smart. with George then? Oh yeah, George yeah. <laughs> and I have been working on this for mm -hmm. a couple of years now, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited about what George does with mm -hmm. this, because the, our, the, our wood would be the base, yeah. and then the material that he's working on growing mixes with the wood, and that makes it really suitable for anaerobic digestion. Now the word anaerobic sounds like the opposite of aerobic, and aerobic means you're using oxygen and other air gases to process something, but you're not uh, doing that. Nope, this one nope. would be, you're right, exactly the opposite. It's an anaerobic digestion without air, and that produces methane gas. How does it digest if it doesn't, you, we associate oxygen with the digestion of everything. Yeah, so what well, goes on there? Yeah, that actually happens in almost all landfills. <laughs> There's no oxygen, mm -hmm. so you end up with uh, anaerobic digestion, mm -hmm. which gives you methane. That's why you see a lot of the, a lot of the landfills have either flares or they're mm -hmm. actually producing power. They did that on, uh, on the Kailua landfill. Mm -hmm. For years they produced power out of it. The thing about the gulch is that most of the material that would break down has already gone to H power to produce mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. So they don't have enough to really make it a viable kind of project. And, and when you say the gulch, you're referring to? Wymanolo Gulch, the city's landfill. And that is not in the community of Wymanolo, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the west side, Kapale. <laughs> just, just as you're turning the curve to go on to the Waianae coast, there's a mountainous area and it's up there. Yeah. And it's up there. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at the next slide, this is all of our wood that is in there. This is what the stockpile, this is probably about a day's worth of wood sitting there. So it really, moving all of this out of the landfill and converting it to power, like Power did said earlier, really keeps the landfill space available and really makes it a better way to do it with the recycle end of it. And the most important thing is the ability to produce power. Mm -hmm. and not import fuel from the mainland. Now, now why did, in that slide, the <clears throat> wood was arranged in windrows, or at least one windrow? Why, why is that? If you leave it for very long, you have to leave it in windrows, and then about turn it about every two weeks, mm -hmm. just to make sure that it doesn't uh, ignite all on its own, mm -hmm. what's called spontaneous combustion. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're doing that kind of process, you have to keep turning it. That's until he gets it. Now, he wants it to go anaerobic. Now, in the Windrow State, does it need any water? Because there's not a whole heck of a lot of water out in that part of the island. No, we don't want to have any water on it because we don't want to start the process mm -hmm. of digestion. Mm -hmm. The process of digestion needs to happen at George's okay. facility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at the next slide, this is, you remember the one with all the wood chips? Here it is, and I'll let George take it from here, but literally he's adding green material to it. Well, thanks, Steve, and uh, aloha, folks, for having us on, and, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, you know, CH4 Ag is a, a local Hawaii-based company that uh, is basically uh, developing renewable energy projects, uh, specifically, um, facilities that will produce a biogas. And uh, when we say that bio phrase term is we're really looking at ways to produce a gas from means that are other than a fossil fuel means. And uh, by that we're looking at organic material, uh, which is material, any material that will basically decay and rot, uh, which is like the PVT waste wood. Uh, it's definitely a material that, uh, as you had mentioned earlier, if you start to to, to make it wet and start to dilute its solidability, um, then it becomes, uh, what we would try to do is make it more like baby food. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. we use a process in anaerobic digestion, which is basically a natural occurring 
process that's been occurring on the earth since man created the earth mm -hmm. and uh, it's a process where microorganisms and bacteria basically digest and break down organic material. Now, now what comes into mind is I'm thinking swamps, we don't have swamps here, but there is the phenomenon in some swamps of stuff bubbling up and in some cases catching fire. Any relation between that process uh, no, and... Uh, no, no, no relation here, no. Um, just because of the fact when we think about um, this particular gas in itself, it's it's so much lighter than air. And so methane mm -hmm. gas is a gas that really is hard for us to see or even to, to taste or smell. I mean, mm -hmm. the smells that we have now when we smell gas is an additive that's basically yeah. Yeah. added for safety. So really, methane is a greenhouse gas that rises very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, um, you know, could be another, perf another reason for our greenhouse gas effects. But for the purpose that we look at naturally, and, and of course what, what goes on in nature is, you know, our green plants are absorbing CO2 for their growth mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot as we take a quick lesson in agriculture. Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to capture all of that carbon to utilize for energy. And as you can see, I mean, our company is called CH4 Ag for the mere purpose of the the formula for methane gas is CH4. Which would be, is that four carbons, one hydrogen? It's or actually one carbon, one, four, four hydrogens. hydrogens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it is very hydrogen rich, you know, which can, can add to other possibilities, right? But in its simplistic form and in nature's already existing form, we're just taking the most simplistic part of it of taking any organic material and in this purpose, we're looking at things that we can control in a green waste form, maybe with a mixture of what PVT has to offer and mm -hmm. with further analysis and whatnot, as we put those things together, we're able to have a feedstock that could then go into a tank that has no mm -hmm. air in it, basically mimicking our stomach, so to speak, mm -hmm. and creating this gas. Like sometimes when you have too much Beets are garlic, you might get a little more gas than, than expected. And this is the same process we're trying to create, which is a natural process. And one of the most significant sources of, of greenhouse gases is the methane that comes from cows. Absolutely. Because they're, they're eating, I don't know, pounds and pounds and pounds Correct. of green stuff all day long, and they've got their four stomachs. And, Correct. Yeah. We're trying to mimic that, but instead mm -hmm. of releasing the methane, mm -hmm. we're basically wanting to capture that methane mm -hmm. and then utilize that in a process that is going to be beneficial for, for us, the, 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 the residents and the folks of the state of Hawaii. Well, couldn't you import a whole bunch of cows to the site and just kind of shovel stuff in? And yeah, that, that would be another <laughs> great way to do things as well. Um, of course, you know, our, our EPA, EPA folks um, mm -hmm. have some restrictions for, oh, for those yeah. types of things, but mm -hmm. those are all very plausible, possible, yeah. and are already currently ongoing. Mm -hmm. And so is, is that another area that we could receive some organic material? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, we're just trying to look at the the, the most simplistic, sure, sure, simplest sure, sure, form sure, sure. that yeah. we could start in the state of Hawaii mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a demonstration plant that we could then help show yeah. the rest of our state <laughs> this is how we can achieve some of these goals that we're, we have these aspirations Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking down the road. I'm, I'm seeing the potential. Yeah. But on that cheery note, we do need to take a break. Code Green Think Tech Hawaii, Mr. George Pritchard and Steve Joseph. Back in a moment. Hi, I'm Lisa Kimura. I'm the host of Family Affairs on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to talk about the issues that really matter. Everything from policies that need to be changed in Hawaii to the fact that we need better gender equality so that we can all have a better shot. Again, join us every Tuesday at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii for Family Affairs. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just gonna scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. 
all our shows will show up and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Welcome back to Code Green, Howard Wig here with George Pritchard, manager of CH4 Agriculture and Steve Joseph, vice president of PVT Landfill. And here we thought research was going on in our little state only at UH Manoa. Absolutely not. It is going on in on the Waianae coast and it's not in little air-conditioned buildings. It's right out there in front of God and nature, and great things are happening. Let's bring up the, the slide of the, uh, the methane digester there. Uh, George, if you can explain what in the world's going on here. Right, and what's unique about this digester mm -hmm. is the digester technology we're utilizing actually was co-developed at Utah State University uh, with a lot of academia, and uh, they've been around for uh, probably over 20 years now, and this is an IBR digester. And uh, what makes it unique is that um, it is processing solids from materials that uh, have not been broken down and doing it in a very small, confined space uh, mm -hmm. with great efficiency. And so not only are the tanks smaller, but the footprint of where we put these are a lot smaller as well, mm -hmm. which makes it very unique from other digesters that are currently in the marketplace. So we're transforming from, we saw that photo of the green waste mm -hmm. plus the dry wood waste, mm -hmm. and that goes into the digester, mm -hmm. and boom, out comes a gas, <clears throat> a biogas, as I understand it, closely resembling uh, methane. Well, it, it's exactly resembling mm -hmm. methane, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. resembling methane probably in a high content, mm -hmm. somewhere around the 65% uh, of the gas that's coming out is methane. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think a, a great analogy would be, uh, or a reference point, uh, Hawaii Gas right now is currently um, extracting this same type of methane gas, about 65% methane gas from mm -hmm. the Honolulu uh, wastewater oh, treatment sewage, plant. The sewage treatment plant. And so, yeah. so again, this is organic mm -hmm. waste mm -hmm. material that is producing a methane, which is similar to what we hope to accomplish and what we want to develop in this particular tank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from that point on, it could be cleansed and cleaned and then further on use as a pipeline quality gas mm -hmm. that they would use in people's homes, or they could take the gas in the stage that it is now and utilize that for power generation for different power generators. Mm -hmm. It could be compressed and be put into vehicles and uh, utilizing mm -hmm. compressed natural gas. These are all the great possibilities that are already occurring that we are looking to develop wow. here in Hawaii. And I believe we have a slide on a flow chart that you go through. So Kate, can you walk us through here? Yes, very quickly, as you can mm -hmm. see in step one, we're gathering the feedstock materials, uh, those organic materials, and they're put into a, a feeding stage, which then basically is converting that as, as best as we can to a baby food type slurry mm -hmm. so that um, it could be digested. It's put into a biological treatment there in step three. That and what, what goes into the biological? Are you this adding is, bacteria? Or something no, or this or is no? a material where we start to heat things in there mm -hmm. to start to, to, to deteriorate other impurities that are in there. And we do that at a temperature. And uh, once those impurities are, have reached a certain temperature, we then send them over to the IVR digester uh, in order for the bacteria and the microorganisms to start to digest. And I would guess that that heat comes from biogas? The heat will come from biogas yep, yep, yep. from our own existing plant. Mm -hmm. um, so the plant can be self-sustaining from the biogas that it uses. You can see that it'll flow into a storage tank, which then that gas will then go up to number seven there, which would be a uh, a generator which does both combined heat and power. Mm -hmm. We would use some of the heat back to heat our biological pretreatment mm -hmm. in step three, and we could use the power in order to run the plant in the facility. Mm. Uh, you then would add a further step to clean it if that's the demand of the client, and uh, you would then have pipeline quality gas, and the yellow line would mean that it is off to the customer. Um, any leftover from the tank is, again, another remarkable component that it produces nothing but digestates, which are basically organic soil amendments. Mm 
that allow us mm -hmm. to go back and put onto the various farms that are growing our organic material. Mm -hmm. It could be stuff mm -hmm. for our particular farmers, which is a very unique thing in what we're doing because the question often is asked, well, where do you get the number one from? Well, some of that we would look mm -hmm. to get from PVT mm -hmm. and continue to do analysis there to perfect that. A lot of that also right now what we're doing is we're working with our local farmers mm -hmm. and being able for our farmers to deliver this material to us so that we can use. And there are a few farmers on the Waianae Coast, to put it mildly. So a absolutely. like a local source to me. A absolutely. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this. One other thing that we wanted to interject and add is, you know, we've developed a relationship right now with Castle High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're working <coughs> on a program with Castle High School with their Future Farmers of America program with uh, Young Keiki there and really wanting to help enhance what they're doing mm -hmm. by allowing them to grow this feedstock for us with mm. our assistance and help as far as the Department of Education would permit us. Mm -hmm. And then basically mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're creating a learning mechanism that is being developed by the Future Farmers of America programs within the school itself and then we would basically assist in however way that we can, mm -hmm. but then allow them to understand how this is a process that then can go all the way to methane gas mm -hmm. to allow our keiki to understand that there's a lot more to farming than maybe just vegetables and mm -hmm. food, that there's also some other opportunities mm -hmm. that they could look at for their own future education and yeah. purpose. Yeah, and th this addresses two things. Uh, problems that come to mind. Number one, not every child is suited for a strictly academic education. Of course they need to know the basics of everything, but to go off into theoretical physics or uh, romantic French literature or whatever is just not their thing. They want to do much more hands-on, kinetic type stuff. Yeah, absolutely, and, yeah. and, and this would be a great you know, we, we hope to be able to work together with mm -hmm. um, the folks over at Castle High School and the uh, Future Farmers of America and their, the ag program that they have mm -hmm. and however we can incorporate the various opportunities we have. I mean, it's from planting of crops to construction of a facility of, um, you know, looking at microorganisms and biology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many other aspects that we, again, as we continue along, we can develop mm -hmm. all of these other areas to basically come back and help ourselves for yeah. our state and where we live. So you're, you, <clears throat> by getting kids into this type of facility, you'd be teaching them without their really knowing it. Like, what is a microorganism? What does it do? What's this gas stuff all about? They've just got to learn that because they're looking at it and they're feeling it and they're seeing the whole process. And before you know it, they've got a great vocabulary and they know what that vocabulary is all about. We're hoping the yeah. wax on, wax off mechanism will work really well here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, another problem is that a lot of uh, farmers will tell you, you know, we're getting old, we're reaching retirement age, and none of the young kids are interested in farming. But this sounds like a great way to get young kids interested in farming. Uh, absolutely. And, and those are our hopes and aspirations. And we will be more than willing to help our educators uh, in wherever they need as they develop those particular programs and use us as a tool to help assist our Keiki mm -hmm. develop mm -hmm. other skill sets, utilizing, utilizing these lands we've, we've used as an economic driver for mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. and maybe a way that we could utilize these lands again to drive an ag economy for the state of Hawaii. So you, you mentioned that the <clears throat> in that flow chart, the last product was a product su suitable for, I guess, fertilizing mm -hmm. egg fields? Yeah, so, it's a soil yeah. amendment, right? Mm -hmm. It's very organic and natural. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the byproduct and waste of our microorganism friends in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that product is going to be rich in nutrients that are excellent for, for our farmers that could mm -hmm. basically... Uh, be an amendment to their soils and whatnot, and again, it's a it's a byproduct coming off of something that we're already doing. And that brings up something else. Is a, I think Hawaii is the first state to ban. I'm saying it wrong. Gly gliophosphate or something mm -hmm. like that. A mm -hmm. 
a hazardous material that is put on crops at the moment. And if they were using this type of amendment instead, would that either reduce or eliminate the need for I po think, poisonous uh, products? I, I think like because that. it's organic and natural, mm -hmm. it's more possibly going to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, you know, our inputs of what we put in are going to determine what our outputs are coming out. And uh, but the positive side is is whatever is coming out is going to be organic, and uh, with further analysis, it could then give us potency of of what could be mm -hmm. really great and what could be maybe just something that's okay. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the piece is, oh. coming out is high in nitrogen because you've pulled Ooh. all the carbon and hydrogen away. Ah. So essentially, it's very rich in nitrogen. Hmm. So it would. Uh, Actually, that's exactly what you need for fertilizer yeah, yeah, for soil. Yeah, I keep soil. hearing that plants love nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah. So it just kind of keeps good. getting recycled. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and that's another part because we know that, um, you know, while, while nitrogen is a helpful piece in one area, sometimes, you know, um, too much of anything um, uh, can be hazardous. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, with, with further analysis, what we know is what's coming off is is very organic and very green, and it's not going to be harmful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just know as we get to that point, we can you know look at further analysis to you know to help our farmers mm -hmm. utilize it. But we would definitely take it again and send it right back to the farms yeah, that are yeah. that mm -hmm. are growing our feedstock. Yeah, and I bet with given all of this positive news that you're giving us that you might have a last slide with some smiling uh, children in it. Oh yeah. my goodness, what These is this These are all, all our about? scholarship <laughs> award winners from Nana Cooley this uh, last year. We, PVT gives out $4,000 scholarships, 10 of them every year at both uh, Nana Cooley High School and Waianae High School. Because mm -hmm. we're trying to encourage them to go on further with their education. And what I like about what George is doing, especially with mm -hmm. Department of Education, is that not only, there's so many aspects of it, the biological part of his, the engineering, maintenance on mm -hmm. the equipment, all of the stuff, as well as the farming, actually boosts and keeps all that money in our economy mm -hmm. and gives, mm -hmm. gives the kids you know, different specialties that they can use and how it fits into a full program like George's got. Mm -hmm. And we keep on hearing about the problem. Kids, there's no good jobs in Hawaii unless you want to wash dishes in Waikiki. So everybody, all the young people leave for the mainland. But mm -hmm. it sounds like this is a good way literally to keep them down on the farm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Another yeah. way to create some new opportunities for them mm -hmm. and, and see maybe farming and agriculture in a different light. And as I mentioned, that would be something we'd really like to support our you know, great educators right now in, in their efforts in, in trying to design those programs for our keiki. Beautiful. That is a very, very cheery note to end on. Code Green, Howard Wig. Thank you, George Pritchard. Thank you, Stephen Joseph. It's been a very, very inspiring program. See you next time. Thank you.